So somebody asked us to make a video on how to use watercolour without making mud. And you can see here I've got a little um, uh, sort of swatches of colour that are directly from each of my watercolours in my, in my palette. And you can see that when you use them singly, they are always so beautiful and vibrant. But when you start mixing them, it can turn into kind of mud unless you are careful with which colours you mix together. So let's start first of all with a couple of little tips before you even start. This is one culprit that can be responsible for making mud. So this has obviously been taken out on an urban sketching trip. I haven't cleaned it off afterwards. You can see all these pans are sort of contaminated with different colours. If I was to start using this palette as it is, I'd have mud before I even started. So make sure you clean off your palette after each use. So for the sake of speed, here is a clean palette. Let's get some paper here and have a little demonstration. Second little tip for you is you will want a jar of water. As you can see, this has been contaminated with various colours and now I've got this kind of muddy red colour. So yeah, I can swish my brush around in that, but always make sure that you then go in with clean water and, and clean off of that, you know, clean off that excess muddy water. So the next tip is to get to know which are your transparent colours in your palette and which are your opaque colours. It's really important to know the difference. And um, you'll find that the um, the opaque colours tend to make much more muddy colours and the transparents, to be honest, they're, you know, they don't, they don't make muddy colours. So let's start with a little example of say a nice purple. So this here is alizarin crimson, which is a lovely uh, transparent sort of deep red. So we're going to try and make a purple. So obviously that's going to be a blue. Let's get some alizarin crimson this is and French ultramarine. So French ultramarine, let's get a bit more blue in there. Let's see what that looks like. So you can see that's got a really nice, rich, sort of clean colour. If I use a bit more red in there. So that's the two transparents. So let's try and make a purple using two opaque colours. So here we've got an opaque red. And also an opaque blue. You can see as well I'm, I'm washing my brush between each time I sort of dip between the paints and that helps stop contaminating the paints. You can see already in the in the palette that it's kind of made a more of a murky colour. A bit more blue. And that'll do. So can you see how muddy that looks compared to the other two? It really isn't a very nice colour at all. Now, not all mud is a bad thing. Sometimes they make quite good shadows if you kind of mix up some of the colours you've already used in your painting and even use a bit of that excess. You know, if, if I've made a whole painting using those colours, I could actually sort of take some of these colours off and use them as shadows. That can work really well. But generally speaking, avoid the opaques when it comes to mixing if you can. Another thing as well is to avoid using too many colours altogether. Again, it's not such a big thing when it comes to transparency. I mean, if I were to add, say, uh, Viridian Green into this mix here, you know, it's still quite a clean colour because again, they're transparent. But if I was to add, let's go in with this cad yellow, you can see it's really grim. Not a very nice colour at all. So there are tips. Um, just experiment, get to know your colours and um, have fun with it. And if you really want a nice, easy way of finding out what is transparent, you should be able to get um, that information off the internet of your particular brands or you can just create a little swatch like this and then you can go over each sort of strip with various colours and if you can see the colour through underneath 
then you'll know that that is a transparent colour. I hope that helps. Why not check out our previous videos and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss your Art Kick Sunday. Meanwhile, you can check out our podcast and find the creative challenges we have coming up at www.kickinthecreatives.com. Back soon.